Hey everyone, it is Natalie from Being Intentionally Creative and today we're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to look at some molds that I got from Timu. I don't know if I've mentioned before, but I came up with an idea that I might thought might be really cool for a wedding and you know anything else. So let me sort of explain what I'm thinking and then you know you can sort of take it from there what you could potentially see yourself doing with it. Every wedding I've ever been to as far back as I can remember when I was a little girl no I don't remember some but most people have a table set up for pictures of those loved ones that are no longer uh, here and it got me thinking that what might be really cool would be to have a memory box and what you could do is the bride and groom would have stationery of some sort and pens that you could actually write how either you knew the people or a special memory you had of that person I just thought it I've got a nephew that's getting married next year and it it just sort of dawned on me that they're going to be obviously they're having a table that's going to have pictures of people that are no longer here and I thought you know depending on the age of the couple getting married they may not really know enough about the person so for example my parents are both gone and my nephew knows and has spent a lot of time around my parents and whatnot but I'm just you know memories that myself and my siblings have or the older uh, cousins have I just I thought it'd be really cool if they could write something and put it in this box as a keepsake and part of my thought process was doing the box and colors of the bride and groom so whatever colors the bride had picked or and or the groom had picked then you know make the box in those colors and that got me even going further with what the box could be adorned with. I mean, you could make the box really simple and have it that the lid lifted up and maybe the only thing you put on it, because it's something I would do, is an angel on the top of it. And maybe some wording on it. I, I'm not quite there with my wording yet. But I thought this would be a really cool keepsake for the bride and groom. So my intention is to make a box in the colors that my nephew and his fiance are going to have at the wedding and adorn it with something. So I ordered some stuff through Timu. That's what this is all about, what's in this bag, or things that I've ordered from them that I thought would be cool on the box. You know, a nice sort of design of some sort on the box. So I'm going to take you through what I've got now depending on how well you know the bride and groom or even if this is something that would work for them I don't know but I just thought from a nostalgic point of view and a memory point of view that it might be kind of cool to have a box like this that you can go back over you know the next few years or whatever and look at the memories or even use it as something else to put keepsakes in from your wedding so let's see some of the things I've got and how big they are. So this first one or may or may not really be for the box itself. It was more I needed to, again, my minimum here in Canada is now $40. So I might have gone a little overboard and got a few extra things. You know what? I'm going to cut this so it's not so, so loud. But the swirls on the side of this, I think this is meant to be sort of a Christmas tree idea. But, too, depending on when people are getting married, maybe that would work. But I was thinking sort of some of these swirls have the potential of going around the box. And depending on, like I say, if it's a Christmas-themed wedding, then, you know, you could put this on. You could put this on the box. So there's that one. Okay, so this is flowers. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a, <laughs> I guess I should mention I love flowers. And my family is all about flowers. And both my parents. My dad was a phenomenal gardener. Phenomenal. So 
Yeah, I guess I would a little, may have gone a little overboard with the flower theme, but here's some different little flowers because I thought you don't, I shouldn't say you don't want anything big on it. It depends on how big the box is. And I have some um, rectangles and whatnot that I want to use to make the box out of. And then I don't, I would only make it as big as it sort of need to be for letter size, even if it was a folded eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But, and the other nice thing that you could do for the bride and groom is give them the paper that could be used in the box. So my head's sort of spinning with all kinds of ideas on this, but I wanted to show you some of what I got. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll make a couple of pieces. And I don't know whether I'm gonna make them out of resin or I'll use the mix to mold, but I kind of want to get an idea. So now this piece here, okay, it is two different pieces and I'm trying to think, and I'm not sure which way they'd hang, but they look like they're got, they have grapes in here, grapes on a vine. I, I was having a little too much fun the night I, I ordered this stuff, but that's okay. I'm sure, I even think if I did up a memorial box that held ashes, I've got some really cool pieces here. Okay, so this is a bird and a rose. And let me see, they are separate, they're not I don't think they stretch into one another. No, they don't. So your bird over here and your flowers here. And I, I had thought of reaching out to my nephew to find out some of the things on his dad's side of the family for what his parents liked. But I thought, oh, I don't want to do that and give up the surprise. So I'm kind of, I'm going to make it somewhat generic uh, and hope I cover Hope, hope I cover what what most people would like. Okay, and this is just a rose. And I, I like these pink molds. I think they're kind of cool. I've gotten a lot of really good pieces out of the pink. Just cut them, right? Save the hassle, just cut them. That was loud. Okay, so this looks like a flower. I'm not sure what kind of flower, and I'm not sure which way this goes either. Is it? Don't don't you love when you get pieces like that and you go, I'm not really sure which way they should go. <laughs> but depending on how it comes out, maybe that'll help me out a little bit. No, better. But I mean, who knows? Maybe it goes that way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> All right, now. Some of the pieces on this one may be a little too big. I think I'm going to make some of these with mixed to mold. That way we can see them quicker. And the mixed to mold might be a nice diversion from the resin. I'm running out of places to put paper. Down you go. All right. Okay. So this has baskets of flowers, which I thought were really cool. Roses on. Love roses. I can't grow them here, which is really odd. I've never been able to keep a rose alive when I planted it out in the garden. And I don't know whether it's my soil or what the problem is, but I just would love, love, love to have a rose bush, but I can't seem to keep them alive. So there, those are the two, and I would have to, like if I use resin, I'd have to make sure I got it poured really quickly. So I almost think I'd take mica powder and fill it in and then just pour the resin over top because they're pretty int int intricate with them. But these roses, again, depending on the size of the box, you could, you could even put them on the end of the box or on the side somehow. I don't know. I, again, I'm going to have to sort of figure out how big I want the box to be and then go from there. Okay. So this one has absolutely nothing to do with the, again, I, well, I shouldn't say that. If you were doing a Christmas theme, yeah, this might work, but this isn't why I bought these. <laughs> This really has nothing to do with the box. These are ornament pieces and they, they're decorated on the inside. That's why I got them. I like that they had a pattern on the inside and I might even do these in glow in the dark because I think that'd be really cool. I think ornaments that glow in the dark 
and then maybe get picked up by the lights that are on the tree are real, would be really cool. And I don't know if I've mentioned it, I have blue spruce surrounding the house. I so badly, so, so badly want to be able to do up enough pieces that I can decorate my trees. It would take a lot. It would take a lot. There's, there's plenty of them, but I just love the idea of decorating them up. I've always wanted to, and yet I've been here, what, 14 years and I still haven't done it. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so this mold I'm not sure about. This seems kind of flimsy. Um, but hey, don't knock flimsy, right? So I'll have to clean this one out. But this is another flower. I'm not sure. I think this might be an iris. This might be an iris. But it's a very, and kind of a, not, I don't want to say, yeah, I do want to kind of say sticky. Not, like I can, my fingers are fine, but it's kind of sticky. So we might do mix the mold in that one, just to see just to see how that turns out. Okay, and the last one, yep, that's it. No more. Is an angel, actually is an angel. I do have angel molds here already. I think you've probably, I think I did a video on my angels. I love my angels. Oh, I love my angels. But I thought I would get another one that could potentially be used on the top of it. And I kind of like the idea of maybe having it as a handle uh, to lift the box up. See, I envision instead of just having a lid that you take off and put down, I want to have a lid that opens up with hinges at the back. So maybe if I were to do a piece like this, have it that it's raised just a little bit so that can be actually used to raise the lid and lower it. So that's kind of a thought I've got. But I thought it'd be interesting to have another mold that was of an angel that I could put on the top of it. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to think here, I'm going to, you know, sort of go off on my own for a little bit now and I'm going to figure out which ones I want to do. And I think just for the sake of it, we will use mixed to mold on some of them. If there's any that need to be clean, I'll, I'll get that done before I pour anything. But yeah, I think it'll be cool to do some of these pieces and yeah see what they look like when they're done. I don't think I want to do all of them, but we will do some of them. So stay tuned, see if you can figure out which ones I'm actually going to do. Be right back. Well, I've kind of made a decision, not a full outfit decision. So the angel I want to do, I'm thinking I'll do polyurethane because I, I want you to be able to see the details of it. So I want to put mica powders on it first and then use polyurethane on that one. I know I have it up on the table and if I have too much of the colors, I've got the four colors because I still had some of those left. If I don't, if I have too much for these, then I'll maybe pour it in them or I will have to come over here and maybe I'll use my ornament uh, piece for any extra I have left over. I did notice with the one mold, this Christmas tree, that I don't know if you can tell the size here, but it's thicker on this end than it is on the other. I don't know if that's intentional or not. And I'm thinking because of the detail in that one, I also want to use my polyurethane or a two part epoxy. And kind of my thought process with that is the star I would do gold and then I would take red and maybe a couple of shades of green and just use mica powder over top of it to get it in because I don't know how you would kind of color that otherwise like if you wanted the detail to stand out so i i shouldn't say that i wouldn't take one of my really um one of these brushes that i have here <laughs> and go through all the details i might i might uh, i don't know right now i'm not really feeling that enthusiastic or you know wanting to do that so i think if i were just to color it in some general colors that it would uh it would come out okay so i don't know I don't know. Anyway, I have my, I have 20 mils, 20 grams of each color and we're going to mix them up and I'm going to start pouring because I want to see how these are going to look. I'll start with the two, the two big flowers before I kind of go on to this one. And I am definitely going to let this sit for a couple hours for sure, for sure, because it's got such intricate little spots. I am not risking this breaking. Like there is just 
Well, you know how I feel about it. You've heard me say it before, so <laughs> I'm just not willing to break stuff. So if I have to let it sit for a while, I will. So let me go ahead and, and mix up these colors because we know this won't take very long. And I have extra at the side if I need it. And I might pour, you know, a couple of colors together just because I can. And yeah, so we'll, we'll see how this all works out. I could have mixed these, but I thought, no, I'll just mix them on camera. They'll be okay with that. It might be soothing to see me mix these. I don't know. And if I have to add a little bit more water because they start to, uh, you know, harden like they might, then I will get a lot more water. Simple is simple is simple. Okay. That's the pink done. The green. So what are you up to today? We're back to a regular week now with the two holidays done. And it's interesting with my husband being a trucker, he was able to get down to the US on Monday to deliver a load and then with the holiday being in the States it's kind of well once he's done you know the load he had on Wednesday then he's kind of gonna have to do stuff up here in Canada because most places down in the States won't be accepting things okay so hopefully I have these all mixed up. And I want to thank everybody in my previous videos who have been helping me with my my words because I keep, you know, missing. <laughs> it's like, what's that word? What's that for? And I'm thinking now as I'm starting to pour this, like, where's your, uh, no, yeah. where's your lazy Susan that you talk about having and then you don't use it? And it's not nearby for me to go get. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to pounce this down. Because this is an intricate mold and I'm going to open it up. So these can, the colors can get where I need them to go. That's the one thing about some of these molds is they're so intricate. And that's something I really need to start paying attention to. Because I think to myself, you're not paying attention to what you're buying. And then you get them and it's like, oh, okay, how's this going to work? Right? So that's something to keep in mind when you order your molds. You know, how intricate are they? How, you know, how long are you going to have to let them sit for in order to... I'm trying to see if that's... I don't know, it went... Like how long are you going to have to let it sit before you actually take it out of the mold to make sure that it's like not going to uh, not going to break. So that's something to really keep in mind. And I don't always do that when I'm ordering ordering my molds. I don't really think about it. I think, oh, that's really pretty. I'd like that. And then I get it and go, ooh, now what? Now what am I going to do? So yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely keep that in mind when you're ordering your molds. If it's resin, it's a little bit different because you got time to work with the, the resin. But on pieces like this, like you are limited. You are limited in time. So something I have to keep in mind. But for the sake of this video, we'll just uh, we'll move along, eh? But yeah, I'm going to for sure let these guys sit because I don't want to, yeah, I'm going to let them sit. So hopefully I have enough of these to get in everywhere and just kind of make this multicolored, eh? And I'm not looking to see if you can see this, so I'm really hoping you can. Let's get this over here. I'm going to have to move it anyway. Use some of the green because I haven't used. I was gonna. <laughs> it's gonna keep the blue for the, the angel if I. Had any extra, but I might be using. 
Oops, I think I'm starting to set up a little bit here. Okay, definitely going to let this one set. Well, I'm going to let them all set. Let's, let's just call a spade a spade. I'm going to let them all set. Oops, and I might have overdone it a little bit on this one. So let's... need to get some of it in here. A little bit more up here. Okay. I think I've got it everywhere it needs to be. Okay, so what do I want to do? You know what? We're going to do the ornaments. I am going to do him and, and with the mica powder. So let's just get these out of the way. Oh, you silly thing are stuck. That one's, yeah, that's okay. I don't have anything for that either. I am not organized. That's another really important thing to do when you're doing working with these guys is to be organized, organized, organized. And again, these guys won't be coming out because I got to get up and around the handle or the up and around here. So I don't want to. Add a little bit of blue to that one. And going around. Got a little bit more left in that. I got lots of green left, eh? No, oh, my green's starting to set. So I'll just stir it up a little bit. That worked. A little bit more in there. I apologize for my hand being in the way. So, yeah, we gotta get this guy up and around. And that one is, I've still got some green left. You'll see about, uh, and I'm at the point now where I kind of don't care that my stick has got different colors on it. Oops, and some blue in this one. Here, I want to bounce this about it a little bit. some up and around here and let's get the rest of this we got a little bit of purple left that we can put in here and we'll probably get some more purple in that round one okay now so I can It's nice when you have a piece that you can do this too. That works for me. <laughs> it's like this guy. This guy is kind of stuck to my my mat, so I would definitely put that on something else moving forward. I wouldn't leave it. I would put it on a piece of wood or something like that because it's uh, stuck. So there's no point in me doing anything with that one. All right. So we're going to let these sit now for at least a couple hours at least because I am not gonna I'm not gonna risk taking any of these out and the potential of them breaking so I will color up my angel and I'll clean up my board a little bit here and then we'll come back and hopefully I have enough polyurethane to uh, do the angel so just stay tuned for a few minutes, which will actually only be seconds to you. Okay, we have our polyurethane sorted and measured, but not mixed yet, because we know how quickly that sets. And I just wanted to show you the angel. I did the wings in an interference gold 
uh, obviously the gown in gold and the face in the pink that I use on my other angel and I did it on the face and the hands. I wasn't really sure so down here I'm thinking this is part of his gown but I'm not a hundred percent sure so I guess we're kind of gonna find that out once it uh, once it comes out I do want to do my tree but I don't know that I have enough of the polyurethane left but I, I think what I might do is wait until these are all taken out and then uh, tackle that in case I decide that maybe I'd be better off doing the tree with two-part epoxy versus the polyurethane. But I haven't decided yet, so you'll have to stay tuned to see what I do decide. And if I have any extra left of the polyurethane, I am just going to put it in some of these spots with the colored pieces. I did get this moved, but again, I think I would put it on something not silicone based. I mean this mat is so it really stuck which surprised me a little bit. So let me, I think I, have, I think that's maybe just an air bubble. It's gone now. Okay so let's mix this up because we know that won't take long and I'm going to use something simple in order to pour it. And I'm just curious, has have any of you used the Let's Resin polyurethane? I'm, I'm trying to debate f through buying more of the Illumilite through Michaels, which is convenient and easy for me. Although I do have Amazon Prime and I can now get the Let's Resin Polyurethane through Amazon Canada. But I'm just curious, have you used it and do you like it? So if you're watching and you can comment on that, that would be brilliant. I'd really appreciate it. I always like knowing what other people think of um, other company products. I mean, I like the the Let's Resin products. I'm just trying to debate whether or not to, to buy, I think you get 60 ounces of, total 60 ounces of it. Again, overall it's less expensive than the Illumilite. I'm just not 100% sure if I need as much that it's in the container. However, I have to admit, when it comes to doing test runs on things, I do like it. I do like having a polyurethane just because it sets up so quickly. And one thing that I did the other day, I had done a piece with the Illumilite polyurethane and I wanted to know just how well it would color or be painted using a spray paint and I was really surprised. Actually, I was really pleased with it, how well it did. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's a great thing to have if you're If you're, I'm trying to concentrate here and not overspill this. If you're wanting to get, you know, like I, I want to know right now how well this is going to work out and, you know, what I can do with it, which is great having it. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do moving forward. So if you've used the Let's Resin, please let me know because I would like to know. Okay, I think I got enough in this. So you're going to have to stay tuned. I've got lots of this left over, but that's okay. I'm going to end up spray painting these ornaments. Okay, as so I get very... I'm probably going to have well, maybe some left over. I'm really not doing well these days with my whole... Uh, how much do I need a stuff? Really not. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to not laugh at that, but I'm going to laugh at that. So because I still have some leftover, we're just going to see how far we get pouring it into this. And I have a deburr now. So if I over pour things, I can maybe clean them up. This may be one of those that you just kind of pour. I know I'm all right, we're just going to stop there. I'm not going to, oh yes, okay, let's put that over top. Can I have it over top? All right. I'm not sure if I should be going right over the top of these pieces. That's getting extremely warm now. Throw that away. Um, like right over the top of, so hopefully, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of poking down 
I need to get this everywhere. Yep, starting to set up, so I gotta get my toothpick out of there. <laughs> As you can see by these other ones, and that's starting to set now. Okay, so we really have to let things sit now. And I'm really hoping I've got that everywhere. I think I do. I really over poured this piece. It's gonna stop. You know what? Can I stop playing? Right? I can just hear you. Stop playing with the darn thing. All right, let's just stop playing. Okay, gonna go away now. Let everything sit. Let it all set up. And I'll be back in a few hours. It won't take you. You'll be back much sooner than that. I'll see you in a bit. All right these things have been sitting I want to say for f almost four hours I yeah I'd say about four hours so we'll start with the polyurethane ones oh my gosh it is so funny that I can't remember what words I need to use and I want to say to my subscribers and those who are commenting and going this is what it is and one person had said they were yelling when I was asking about the flakes, the metal, metallic flakes I was using in one of my other videos. It was just, I, I can envisionize someone doing that. So anyway, let's take a couple of these things out or we'll take them all out and see how we did. So I knew that with these pieces that were done with the mixed mold that I, there was no way I could take them out early because I would run the risk for sure of potentially breaking some pieces off which I didn't want to. So I'm just going to put this over here. I'm going to get rid of those for a second and we'll bring out my black cardstock. Oh, okay, so this piece needs to definitely go in something else moving forward. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Now I think you could probably move this. I'm not going to try and hold that. I think you can move these a few different ways perhaps. I'm not really sure, I have to be honest, I'm not sure about the top and bottom, and I'm almost wondering if I did pour too much, because I'm thinking that where this is should be a hole in here, and it's not. So in spots like this, I, I believe I've over poured too much. So that would be, have to be something I would be careful of in the future. And I can probably clean that out if I want to, but I'm thinking that I shouldn't have poured as much as I did. I'm thinking there was, you know, sort of a level to this that I <clears throat> went beyond. But it is pretty. I do, I do like it. I just have to be more careful when I'm pouring it next time. I almost wish my table were up really, really high so I could see it at eye level. Uh, but hopefully you can sort of get a good indication of what that would look like had I not over poured it but again I'm learning so let's let's deal with this one here since this one seems to have been the the piece that just wanted to stick to everything so we're gonna be really careful with this because I think this is one of those really delicate molds that you with this type of material you wouldn't want to be too too quick in taking out. And the other thing I want to mention to you that I found out is that, uh, I thought I broke something, that if you're going to use these or any mold, I'll say that for or with the mixed mold, the resin create, the alumilite, clean these molds out really well before you put resin in them because if they're not really clean, you will get sort of, it looked like a skim of the mixed mold or you know the ceramic I'll call it ceramic resin on your pieces I I had that happen with one of my pieces and then I washed out really really well and it was fine after that so if you get that happening it's potentially because your mold uh, hasn't been cleaned out really really well so when I did it with my other mold let go of this I washed it twice with soap and water I washed it once with soap and water and then I rinsed it out really well and then I washed it again and it was fine so I just wanted to point that out to you. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Ooh, ah, that is pretty. And it all came out. I didn't break anything. And I am putting that down to letting it sit for as long as I did. That's really pretty. Even coloring wise. Wouldn't you agree? I can see you out there. Yes, Natalie, that's very pretty. <laughs> 
I have to amuse myself. I spend way too much time by myself. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's do this one next because I'm really curious. I did over pour this one as well. And let's see if I can... Oh, I really want to get this out without breaking it. So very carefully. And anyone who's worked with ceramic resin, you know, you got to be very gentle with it. I think my biggest concerns maybe going to be in the inside here. But again, maybe because I left it for as long as I did. Seconds for you, hours for me. That we'll be okay. Hoping, hoping, hoping. Again, I just keep moving around. I just keep moving around until it all lets go. Alrighty. Oh, there's another pretty. Oh, you know what? Huh. As I'm looking, not so much from the mold itself. However, what do you see? Do you see it? I see it. Well, I saw it as soon as I took it out. It looks like a heart. Potentially, that was what they were gaming for. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, ooh, ah, this is what you're supposed to be doing as I'm taking these pieces out and not breaking them. Now, I do, it looks like I have at least one or two air bubbles in this one. And, you know, I, c I can understand why. But I, they're not, I mean, that thing's fragile. But not enough that I'm at all worried about. But could you see that being on a box? That'd be pretty. Maybe on the, fr if you imagine the front of it and that being on the center front. That'd be pretty. Here I am, my mind's just rolling with, with ideas, which I absolutely love. When my, I get the opportunity, like, and I can come up with really cool ideas, I love it. It makes me very, very happy. Okay, let's, very gentle again, this is the rose. It's making me think of a song from the 80s about a rose. And a male band that sang it. Life is a rose or... Oh, and it's a, it's a romantic song. And, for, it, and it would be a heavy metal band. And I'm not really good with heavy metal bands because they weren't my thing when I was growing up. I was classical, country. Um, rock and roll, yes, but not hard rock. Uh, another one. Another one. Oh, there we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? So you really have to cast these things to see the how pretty these pieces are. That's really pretty, too. That's really pretty, too. I'm loving the coloring, too. The throwing of the, you know, random colors everywhere. So let's go to this one now. Our angel. And see how we made out with him or her. It can be either or. Oh. Yeah, I think I did that right. I wasn't <coughs> I wasn't sure about this part over here. And I you know it was kind of interesting too, because with the this kind of screwed me up a little bit. With the way the wing was here and then the hand and the wing going down, I wasn't sure how it was gonna look when I took it out because I'm looking at it from the back, but it can't, yeah, I'm looking at, isn't that pretty, that's pretty, so imagine, don't you love when I say that, putting this on the top, I want to get these guys out of the way, just because I want to sort of, the visual is important, I'm a very visual human being, I, I see and I understand, you talk to me sometimes on things and I don't get it, so imagine this being on the top of the box, but elevated just enough to cast a shadow and also be something that you could use as the handle to lift it up. What do you think? That's really pretty. And I love that I did her face in the pink because when it comes out, it, it changes, it changes the look of the color which is brilliant that turned out very well I'm doing I'm doing really good with this today now the only thing I'm not really fussy about and maybe I over poured 
Uh, it's hard to say or it's just the way. Okay, so this here, which is part of the hand, is weird. I get it because of the depth of the piece here, but I don't like how I don't like how deep it is. So I don't know if I can maybe use my Dremel and just cut that off somehow. That might be interesting, but I kind of like to because it looks weird. Like this hand looks fine, but this is this is weird. I have to I have to fix that. I can't live with that. That's just off to me. Okay. Now that you know what I can't handle. <laughs> but we're doing well. So far, I'm, I really do like this. I just have to fix the hand. Of course, you know, other people looking at wouldn't see it and wouldn't care, but okay. <clears throat> I want to be very careful because again, I want to get these out without breaking anything. Okay. So these are probably going to be a little harder to see. And hopefully you can see the, the indentation in that. So I either have to find a way of decorating these before I pour them. Or how am I going to fill in these really fine lines? Uh, because, I mean, I have very fine tip paint pens, but I don't know if there'll be enough for that. Okay. And I will be washing these out really well. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm very impressed today. Can you tell? <laughs> oh, man. Some days, I swear to God, it does not take a lot for me to just be impressed. Other days it takes a lot. Today apparently is not one of those days. All right. So again, very, very pretty decorating, like with the lines and all that. It's just a matter of how to fill them in. Now, I've watched other resin artists take paint and whatnot and put them in, but as much as I had thought about doing that, my concern is then all of a sudden this piece is going to be the color of your paint. So it really doesn't, doesn't lend itself to that. If you've done that where you've coated it somehow to fill in, let me know in the comments how you've done that because I'd be curious to know where it's a mixed to mold or ceramic resin piece. Because I know with resin, I have to get that off, that, you know, I could put paint and whatnot over top of that and fill it in, um, but, and then wipe off the rest of it. I don't know how I would do it with the ceramic resin. My, my board is not level right now. That's got to be fixed. So yeah, fill it, filling those in somehow would be really cool. And I know that these guys I think are going to be too small or too, too small. Yeah. Too big. There's got to be, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. Now nah, it's going to be one of those things that I'm, it's going to drive me nuts until I figure it out. Now I think these are maybe narrow enough that if I put paint on it, man, can it, that'll be a, I'm trying to think one of these is not touching. Bear with me as I roll that. Okay, now yeah, we're still not right. I'm going to have to fix that later. Stuff like that drives me nuts. All right. Well, that's pretty too. Yeah, so fi figuring out how to fill in so you see all the design. That's, that's my next quest. And the last one. Is that what you come? Oh, yeah. So I have to admit the ones in ceramic resin, they're very pretty. And if I can figure out the uh, painting of them or coloring, coloring them in somehow, that would be brilliant. So that is all of it. All the pieces that I've done, ceramic resin, polyurethane. Next is to figure out how I would fill in the blanks as it were. So let me know what you think. And yeah, just let me know what you think. And if you have any suggestions for filling in the lines on these, I, I do have some really fine tip paint pens. I can try them 
for sure to see if they'll work. I'm just wondering if you guys have any other uh, ideas of what you think might work. I can spray paint the polyurethane. We know that works. I just, I'd like to get the design on it. I'm just not sure how. And maybe for these ones, you don't necessarily need the design because it's showing up really pretty, like on the pink, it for sure. Uh, definitely the or uh, the purple, the pink, the purple. I don't know. I'd just like to get something in there. Anyway, we could sit here all night and listen to me come up with ideas, but we're not going to do that. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And yeah, just let me know what you think, what you've been up to. And I am going to work on getting this one done with polyurethane. And probably what will end up happening is I will be posting on my Being Intentionally Creative page on Facebook. As I sit and look at, okay, I have to stop now because I'm starting to, you know, mind's blowing up with ideas. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me, watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, comment, like, subscribe, and I look forward to sharing my next video with you. Take care. Bye for now.